is there's comfort in knowing what you know. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that guy knew how to live that life. Mm-hmm. And if I get up and I get in the pool and I'm healed, I don't know what I don't know what to do now. Right. You know, how many guys listening to this, they know how to, you know, whatever it is, they know how to let their wife spiritually lead the family or discipline the kids or they know how to let the guy that sits at the other desk at work do all the work and get all the credit. Like there's a lot of comfort Mm -hmm. in knowing how the day will go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's hard to get, like if you're listening, like I've been in that boat, like it's hard to make the decision to make change because then you don't know, like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, kind of trying to walk on water. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't walk on water and you want me to come out in the middle of this storm and, and walk <laughs> on water. And I, I can't do that. You know what I mean? And so it's like really scary. So like, if you're in that position, like I, I get it. Like it's when you make those choices, you're suddenly in a world where you don't have all the answers, right? Which probably just goes back to, you know, how, how much faith are you putting in God? Welcome to the Men of Victory podcast, where we just tackle issues that men deal with, and, and we talk about ways that we can overcome it as men. So this is just a key part of being a man of God and really growing in who we are. So if you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us on podcast uh, format, we just want to say thank you for being with us today. My name is Pastor John Major. I'm an executive pastor here at Victory Life Church, and I'm excited for our ho- or our co-host today because we're kind of doing this together. This is kind of an organic topic we're going to be talking about, but Casey Palmer. Yeah, always excited to uh, hop on and be in front of the camera and not just behind the camera. Yeah, Casey. So that was good. So you get to run everything, the light. You do all the the magic to make me look good. There is a lot more going on here than you might think. Yes, it's and it takes crazy. a long time to make me look good. Well, I, I think you're doing okay. All right, right. all right, yeah. all right. So we're, we're just excited about a topic that we want to talk about is something that you've really, guys, put on your heart for a while now. Yeah. And it's just something, I think, as we were talking about it, it was just such an ideal timing for men. And really the topic is passivity. Yeah. And so, so let me kind of set it up. And then we can kind of unpack it a little bit and how it affects men. And then I think we got some tips we can help the guys in to yeah, not so. be passive. Yeah. Um, so passivity is the quality or state of being passive. Uh, passivity is passivity is allowing others to do things to you without complaining or pushing back. Yeah. And what I wrote down, the definition that I found that I really liked was being subjected to an action without producing a reaction. Yeah. Was the one that I really liked. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when, when you hear the word passivity, when it comes to men, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Yeah. I mean, men or people in general, just letting life happen to them. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, I I don't understand what's going on with my life. All these things are bad, Uh, but, but then you're not taking actions towards the things that are happening in your life. Right. right? You know, you're not stopping thinking about what's happening, making a decision, a Mm -hmm. game plan, and then moving forward. Right. And it just it can wreak havoc on every element of your life, Mm -hmm. your marriage, your family, your work, your, I mean, everything. And so it's just something that I've just always kind of had this passion for that, you know, you gotta, you gotta get in the game. You can't, it's, this is not a sideline event. Like you gotta get in the game. You gotta make choices, which are not always going to be right. Like I've certainly made my fair share of bad Mm -hmm. choices, but I'd, I'd rather make a bad choice than let somebody else make the choice for me. Right. So. Right. Well, and in Second Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And that's really when you look at passivity, God has not given us passivity. No. No, in fact, one of the notes that I have down, if you look at it, all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Yep, I was just going to talk I, about that. I'm sure that. that's, yep. uh, that's on, your, on yeah. your notes. So, I, no, I, let's unpack that. Let's talk about the Garden of Eden and what happened there. Um, and so, you know, it, it's it's Adam and Eve, and do not eat from this fruit, from this tree. Yeah. And the enemy, the serpent, um, Satan, tempted Eve with it, and she decided to eat the fruit. But then let's talk about Adam. What was he in that moment? Yeah, he was just standing there. And I think if you, you know, before I started reading the Bible more and Mm -hmm. kind of digging in and trying to understand 
you know, my faith more and, and all the elements, I, I could have easily said, man, Eve really screwed it up, you know, back in the garden for everyone. Right. But, you know, Adam just stood there right. and watched her and didn't step in. And now we're, I mean, you know, I, the thought that I have, right or wrong, you know, you can kind of interject is that, you know, the, the enemy, you know, the serpent just sitting there was like, man, if I can just get Adam to stand there, it's almost like sowing passivity into the rest of the generations. Like that is, that is my hit right here is I'm going to take, I'm going to take men out at the knees. And so now every battle that we've got to face, there's the first battle is just making the decision to get in the game. You know right. what I mean? Or what I have to make a decision here. Like that's, I got to get up the gumption. I haven't even decided what it is I'm going to do. I just got to get up the gumption to even do something. Right. Right. And so they, it's, it's a hard blow for, you know, humanity right at the get go. Yep. And, and Adam and this being just very passive in that moment, it really set in motion the rest of life as, as we see it now. We talk about, you know, just it was installed right there in that moment and passed on from generations to generations to come. And the rest of the Bible is all Jesus and, and God is doing it in those moments is to to break the passivity and to show the love of Christ um, throughout it so we understand it. Yeah, I, I love when Pastor James says that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, you, fl- you look at the very first page of the Bible, and that was how long we made it until we messed up. And yep. really, maybe arguably, one of the biggest mess-ups was that Adam didn't go, whoa, hey, hang on, we're, we're not supposed to eat from that tree. We should be talking about, we, we need to stop and pause and have a discussion, and we're, we're just not supposed to do that. Right. So here's some things that, I, when I was doing the research and just some things, so when we talk about passivity, um, and we talk about, does it have a hold on your life? Here's how you can tell. Here's some Ooh, things yeah, that maybe if you're listening, you're hearing it, and you're like, I don't think I'm passive, but maybe this is going to bring something up so you can deal with passivity in your life. Uh, do you procrastinate over plans? Do you talk and think over plans and then take no action? Mm. I, I think that's something that's pretty prevalent, is yeah. we may talk about things left and right, but we never actually do them. And there can be little things. Yeah. Like, I think we can come up with big examples, but it's like, do you have a home project that you oh, yeah. should have been start, like, that you're like, you're always like, oh, I need to get this done, or mm-hmm. I need to do that, or I need to do this. And it, just small things. It's not like big. Right. And I think another one is, is we're getting ready to roll into the first of the year. And what's huge during the first of the year is these resolutions. Oh, yeah. And that's passivity in the moment. If you think about, I'm going to do this. I want to read my Bible each and every day but then I actually don't do it. I'm talking it, and I just, you know, talk is cheap. Action speaks louder. It, It's the fact that you were waiting for the new year to hit to even start as passivity Yeah, in and of itself. Oh, why, why you got to say that? That hurts, man. That's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true. It digs true. deep sometimes. It does. Yeah. It does. Here's another area uh, of passivity. Um, do you expect others to take care of your needs? You're loyal, you, yet you secretly expect others to take care of you. Ooh. You know, that's passivity. That's your passive. And that could be, let's even, I mean, that's in a marriage. If you think about it, there is some people that are potentially, and I think at times I, I'll agree, I've been passive. I've yeah. allowed my wife to take care of me. And maybe it's, you know, over uh, the, the household projects and household things that need to be done. But I would say spiritually. Okay. I think this is a huge one when it yeah. comes to men, when sometimes maybe if our wife is, uh, we think is more spiritual than we are, so we become passive and we don't step up to leading the family spiritually. Yeah. And so that was me in my life because my wife grew up in the church. I did not. Mm-hmm. And my whole, my, and you know, we're married and we're, we're, we're growing. She was leading because I was so passive and didn't feel qualified to lead. Oh, yeah. And so finally, it's like she just finally said one day, are you going to lead or not? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to. And we we switched roles in that moment. But I'll just be very passive because yeah. I was afraid. Yeah, I mean, just go along with that in your marriage. You know, if you, you know, you're a guy and, and you're always letting your, you know, your wife make the decision on how you're going to discipline kids or, you know, what's the family schedule going to look like for the kids or all those things where you're just like, I'm just going to let her do it. Yeah. You know, is there some sort of, and maybe not, you right. know, maybe it's, division of labor, but that could be another item, you know, in your household where you're just being passive. Yeah. Um, and it could be, you know, I think back to leading your family spiritually and these go together maybe is that, you know, maybe 
you're scared because you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't, you know, maybe it's a l- you know a little bit of pride or something, and that you you don't want to screw up. Like I don't necessarily always know like I'm making the best decision on how to lead my family spiritually, but right. I'm trying. Right. And and when I make a mistake, uh, it's okay. I'll, fi- I'll figure it out, or somebody right. will point it out. Right. You know, if you're surrounded by the right people in your life, you know what I mean. If I big make a big mistake, you're gonna call me out on it mm-hmm. and and help me figure out how to do it the right, right. way. Right. You know, but if I'm not doing it at all, well, then I'm not, I'm not growing. I'm not mm-hmm. learning how to do those things. And then when I don't have people surrounding me in my life, you know, maybe there's a moment where I'm by myself and I don't know what to do. And I think a lot of times a passive person just lets life pass them by. Yeah. And then later we, you may regret, I wish I had those years back. I wish I would have engaged more. Yeah. Sure. And it all comes back to a lot of hurts and wounds that we go through. But here's another way is, do you blame others for your losses and circumstances? Ooh. Do you look at people as being in your way more than you look at to the power of God? Mm. I think th- I think that's really huge for men. Is sometimes we just, we, we don't trust God in the situation or, or whatever's going on. Maybe it's a work thing. And we just start blaming others. And we're just sitting along being passive. Yeah, just kind of passing the buck. Yep. Well, yeah. I guess that's all it's going to be because I guess I'm just not good enough to get that promotion. Um, I guess I just haven't proven enough. And it's because of this person, I'll never, never get promoted. Oh, yeah. Instead of maybe it was something that I didn't do. Right. You know, maybe I didn't put in the effort. Right. Instead of pointing the fingers, we need to point the fingers back at ourselves and say, Lord, what did I do? Is there anything I can do better? And that's not being passive. That's being on the uh, on offense. We, yeah. we, we want to go on offense and and really have that. But I see that so many times uh, when I talk to men is in this. Then it goes back to another point of the power of our words. And when we act like that and we say those things, we're speaking it into existence. Yeah, sure. And that's and that's another form of passivity is that as well. Um, do you uh, are you intimidated when you ask for counsel and help? That's another way that you may be passive. Yeah. The passive people don't allow. Um, we're just very transparent here at the church. Um, that's what Pastor James has modeled. And uh, I think that's why um, we're just seeing God move in our lives. This is because we're transparent. But a passive person is not going to open up to others. Yeah, well, it's going to involve them. I mean, if you're going to open up to others, that's got to involve you starting a process of change. Mm-hmm of doing something. Yep. And it makes me you know it, it makes me think of on your last point together too is just you you put those things together and then you kind of get the mindset of like I don't ever have good things happen in my life. Mm-hmm. You know or or how come that person that person got the promotion and I didn't or you know that person's taken the vacation that I'm not or you know whatever it is, you know what I mean, you're always kind of pointing the finger at other people and trying to figure out why everybody's got it better than you. Right. Um but then you're not maybe you're not stepping up and and getting involved and and so the other the other notes i have in here going back to the you know kind of a biblical reference mm-hmm. is if we look at you know Saul and Saul King Saul and, and David mm-hmm. and so Goliath comes out and he's like hey everybody come challenge me right and Saul does nothing right. but then there's one little line so you're like okay maybe Saul didn't know what to do cuz there's this giant here um but then it's in um uh, first Samuel 17, 16 for 40 days, the Philistine came forward every morning and every evening and took his stand. Saul had 80 chances, 80 chances to decide to do something. Right. And he did nothing. Right. David hears this one time and he's like, Oh, okay, I'll go, I'll go kill him. Mm -hmm. I'll go take care of it. And then if you kind of look at that starts to become the trajectory of Saul, his decline, right? You know, that's the beginning of his decline, and that's the beginning of David going up. And if you look at it, David took action, and he was on an upward trajectory, not always making the right decisions. He didn't no. always do his best, no. But he's making things happen in his life. He took control. He did he it. he did it, and then Saul just sat there. And again, it wasn't like he missed one chance. This mm-hmm. was there were eighty chances for him to come up with a decision right here, and then. That's the beginning, you know, now people start singing songs about David being better and, you know, that's just his decline. And it's just because he, he was passive. He didn't right. make some form of decision, 
um, whether it be right or wrong, because even if you make, this is the thing, if you're scared about making a decision of being wrong, it's okay to be wrong. Right. Make a decision, and if you're wrong, now you know how you shouldn't have done it, yep. and it will it will change. You kind of are narrowing in, you know? Yeah, you uh, learn from your mistakes. Yeah, so I, I think you got to, if you don't think it's happening in your life, pause, look at it, and go, how many times have I not made a decision mm-hmm. when something came up? Right. And, and maybe that's why I'm not getting anywhere, is I'm just letting life go by, and I'm just kind of along for the ride. Right. You know, another example in, in the Bible as I was researching, and, and this one really hit me pretty strong, was it's in John chapter 5, but it's about uh, the man who laid by the pool of Bethesda. Uh, he's been physically paralyzed for 38 years and, and just waited every day for someone to carry him in to the healing waters. You remember the story? Oh, yeah. And it's when Jesus saw him, he addressed the man's emotional and spiritual passivity rather than his physical passivity. That's what I love about Jesus. He asked him, do you want me to, do you want to get well? John 5, uh, verse 6. For the man to receive his healing, he had to become active by picking up his mat and walking in his activity, not the passivity. Jesus healed him. So we can learn from, from the story that passivity is costly. So yeah. for 38 years, he waited for someone else to do it. And all he had to do, and he didn't cry out and even ask. He was very passive. But Jesus said, do you want this to be healed or not? Well, yeah. Well, let's stop being passive because 38 years ago, you could have got healed. Yeah. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. Let's get take it and let's let's walk. Let's get to healing and everything. So it's just a good example of sometimes we, we're our own worst enemy when it comes to this. Because we think that, or we don't trust Jesus enough, and we don't, we, we become very passive, and well, we don't, I, you know. Yeah, and I think that goes what goes along with that, based on that story, is there's comfort in knowing what you know. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that guy knew how to live that life, mm-hmm. and if I get up and I get in the pool and I'm healed, I don't know what I don't know what to do now. Right. You know how many guys listening to this, they know how to. You know, whatever it is, they know how to let their wife spiritually lead the family or discipline the kids, or they know how to let the guy that sits at the other desk at work do all the work and get all the credit. Like, there's a lot of comfort Mm -hmm. in knowing how the day will go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's hard to get, like, if you're listening, like, I've been in that boat. Like, it's hard to make the decision to make change because then you don't know, like, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, kind of trying to walk on water. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't walk on water and you want me to come out in the middle of this storm and, <laughs> and walk on water and I, I can't do that. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's like really scary. So like, if you're in that position, like I, I get it. Like it's when you make those choices, you're suddenly in a world where you don't have all the answers, right? Which probably just goes back to, you know, how, how much faith are you putting in God and right. how, how much are you letting well, and him I, have control over you trying to control everything. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think when when you think of passivity in men, um, and I know there's women watching this, and and this isn't just a male issue. This no. is a female. This is just people in general. But um, I think we just allow maybe some hurts and pains in our past, some fears well up, and then we just become spectators instead of in the game. Well, and yeah. and passivity, and and so here's some causes of passivity. There's some fears out there that cause us to be very passive. One is a fear of failure. Yeah, totally. The fear of failure of I'm not I'm not going to put myself out there anymore because I failed before. And I think that's huge for men because that's a pride issue. Yeah. That that we we don't allow our pride. We 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 hold on to our pride saying I'm not going to put myself back out there because I don't want to make another mistake or I don't want to be looked at in, in that way as a failure. Um, or anything. So the fear of failure is just, I think it's so predominant in men. Yeah. And it's hard. Like I, you know, since I started coming here and got more involved in my faith and leading my family and, and, you know, Mm -hmm. trying to be the more stand up guy at work at other, you know, at other jobs before I was here and like, it's hard and you just fail. Yeah. Like you just like, you're going to screw up, right? Right. Like you're going to make the wrong decision about what you should do with your family. You're going to discipline your kids the wrong way. You're going to like, it's just going to happen. Yep. Um, but that's, I, 
you kind of got to just get over it. You do. You, you got to just get over it and get in the game. And now I, you know, I mean, I, I make mistakes, but I, there are certain things I now know how to do, you know, better. Well, it, and I, and I think of, you know, I, we talk a lot about just sports and training and things like that. Cause we're both, we run, you're an Ironman and, and everything. And so, you know, I look at that just a fear of failure. Um, the first time, you know, I ran a marathon, I didn't qualify for Boston. <laughs> you didn't? No, oh, I did I didn't not. Either. <laughs> and, and there's very rare a person does. It certainly, far, I mean, yeah. But the percentage is small. If I would have used that fe- that failure in that moment and said, "Well, I'm just not good enough. I'll never do this." Well, I would probably be, you know, I'm very out of shape right now, <laughs> and and lose something that I'm very passionate about. Yeah. Have I? And so I didn't let that failure stop me from doing what God called me to do. So have I qualified for Boston yet? No. Will I? Who knows? You never know. Um, but. I'm doing something that God makes that I love to do. And I think that's a lot of times when men try to start working out or they're, we get a little older and we're, we've added some comfort weight on and, and everything. And so just we're like, to, we're going to, we're going to make a decision to start lifting. We're going to start working out. Well, after a week, because it hurts so bad, we feel like a failure or we look at the, the, the scale and it doesn't move to the way we want it to. We feel like a failure. Then we just stop. Yeah. We just give up. And we go back to comfort, which a lot of times that is comfort food. Or for men, it is comfort things. Maybe it's watching things on the internet or our phones that we should not be. We go back to comfort things instead of saying, you know what? I didn't succeed this time, but guess what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it better next time, and I'm gonna succeed the next time. Yeah, I'm gonna put myself back out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You just have to keep. You just have to keep going. Yep. You know what does Rocky say? You know, it's about how hard you can get hit and stand back up. Like, I mean, you're going to get, that's life. You're going to get hit. You know, if you decide to get in the game, life is going to hit you. The enemy is going to attack you and you just got to, you just got to stand up and and keep going. There's two other fears that are major causes. um, And I want to hit on before uh, we wrap this up and kind of finish today uh, the talk. But the other one is a fear of rejection. It kind of goes with failure, but the fear of rejection is huge for men. And the last one is the fear of death. We become passive because we just fear dying. And so we just kind of get comfortable and just we just find the lazy boy and we just sit around. Yeah. Or we're not actively leading our families. And I and when I really think of passivity to the men that I'm talking about and or talking to, is I think we just become passive in our faith. You know, and that's totally. really the biggest thing I want to hit home is, is no matter what we've done in the past, these fears and everything is if we can overcome these fears and just be very active in who we are and, you know, don't throw a comparison on because I think that's something we can do as men, That's a big you one. know, is comparison is I can't be the way Pastor James is, you know, I think a lot of us look I, and, you know, but here's the beauty of it is there's only one Pastor James and he's incredible, but there's going to be a Casey who's incredible and God's going to have you do something as well. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's where everybody's thought process stops. Like I can't, I'm not as faithful as pastor James. Mm -hmm. I've only been coming to church, like really engaged. I mean, I grew up Catholic and, Mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, I've always gone to church, so I don't want to take away from that, but like really engaged in the process. Right. Seven years. Right. It, I I would hope that I'm not as faithful as Pastor James, right? Or or Pastor Ralph, or you. Like, yeah. I mean, you guys have just been working in, in this environment for longer than I've been mm-hmm. attending, and so yeah, I shouldn't I shouldn't be able to do that, you know. And and on the flip side, you know, maybe Pastor James is like, man, Casey takes great photos or does great videos. Well, I've been doing it for right. almost thirty years, right? So. Yeah, I would hope that I'm better than a guy that picks up a camera and takes a few photos or I need to rethink my career. <laughs> like just everybody stops. They just go, I wish I was as good as that person. Right. Okay, so let's go. Great. I wish I was as good as that person. Have I put in as much effort in that mm-hmm. category, that topic as that person has? Right. Because most likely you, you haven't or you wouldn't look at that person and go, oh, I, I wish I was like that person. Right. You know what I mean? If you were similar in levels and whatever it is, you wouldn't look at them and compare yourself in that way because you've put the work in. You know how hard it is. Right. So, yeah. 
Yeah, that's just a, you know, and, you know, I think for, for men, it's just, you know, the, the biggest thing is you don't want to look back later in life and regret not being out there yeah, and being just passive. You know what I mean? Because I think there's just a lot of men at the end because of these fears and we don't have brothers to help encourage us. We become so passive and later in life, we just regret. I wish I would have done this earlier. I wish I would have done that or I wish I would have been more assertive in my marriage because if I was, maybe we wouldn't have got that divorce, you know, and it's just being passive in the moment. And those are things you just want to look back and, and kind of regret. Yeah. Yeah, I just think you got to, you know, maybe an easy way to just to start is just to think when things happen today, I've got to make a decision. Yeah. And it doesn't mean being drastic or, no, no, or no. dramatic no. or or anything crazy. It might even be something as simple as your boss asks you to do a project at work that you don't want to do. And the action is just respecting that he's in that position of authority mm -hmm. and having a constructive conversation with that boss and saying, okay, hey, great. Thanks. I'm going to get this taken care of, you know, and just that little, the little thing. And the boss goes, oh, hey, that was a great attitude to have about doing a, yeah. a job that's not great. And and now all of a sudden, oh, maybe things look just a little bit better mm -hmm. at work, you know, or, you know, when you get home and it's like you, you've got five different places to take your kids or whatever, you know, and you just go, hey, okay, here's the plan. I'm going to, something's happening in my life. And so I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take Liam to basketball tonight. I'm going to take care of that. If, mm -hmm. if you can make dinner or, you know, whatever it might be. And you, you took an action, you know, and it's those little things that add up. I think, I, I think passivity is when you look at the parable of the talents, um, is a one talent person. Yeah. Is I'm going to hide it and I'm going to bury it because I'm going to give you back what you gave me. And, and when we're not passive, we become five and 10 talents. Wow. You know, it just made me think there's a, there's a guy listening to this that spends every night just going home and sitting on the couch. Yeah. And for whatever reason has decided to not get in the game. Like in my word to that person would be like, God gave you talents. Yes. You are there. You have value in some way mm -hmm. that other people don't. Yep. Like there's something about you that is special that you can do. And when you sit on the couch... Like you're just not maximizing. You're not getting the most fulfillment and enjoyment out of it. Like I, I'd, I'd like to think that I'm doing work that revolve around my gifts and it brings me, I have a huge amount of joy because of that. Because I love doing it. It's making a difference. Well, like, and if you're like, missing that, you're just missing out on being are. more joyful you in are. life. And, and you are not made to sit on the couch. Every single person listening to this yep. is special in some way. Absolutely. And, and you got to, you got to use those gifts and make a difference and, and it will bring you more joy to your life than watching every sporting team that you love. Not that you can't do that. I'm right. just, you know, don't just sit there watching other people live life. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, and it. it's, it goes back to what, what it says in the one talent. It says when you hide your talent, you wicked and lazy servant. And I think that's the only time that it, that somebody's called the wicked. Yeah. Like that. So you think about it, we're called to serve because that's what Jesus did. He yeah. came on this earth to serve one another and die for us. And so when we're passive, what we're doing is we're just being lazy and wicked and we're not doing what God's called us to do. Yeah. And, and I've and, been there. I've been that. Oh, I, yeah. I've been I, the same like, too. If you're listening to this, I yes. am not above this. I did not pop into this world, yeah. uh, understanding it all. Like I'm still trying to figure it out. I, you know, I, I have been there. Yep. Um, Cause I think, I think at the end of the day, there's, you can be, you can be aggressive and, and engage in some areas, but there might be just that one area that you're very passive in. Yeah. And I think that's for the guys is, uh, we're not saying it's people are just sitting at home doing nothing. Yes. There are guys that do that, but uh, just ask yourself, Lord, is, is there an area in my life that I'm just being too passive in? Yeah. And allow him to speak. And then when he speaks, make an action plan to not be passive in that area. Because I think there's been there's been times where I've been very passive in my finances and I haven't seen God bless our finances because I'm 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 in control of everything else. But except that one area I just I was very passive in and I just saw I didn't see the blessings that follow. Yeah. And so And it's really easy to do that. Mhm. Mm 
you know, because there are just so many things to juggle mm -hmm. that like it's good to just step back and, and like you were saying, is there an area that I'm that I just don't realize maybe that I'm being passive. Right. Um, because right. that you might just be missing out. Yep. And it goes back to the second Timothy one seven that I started with. And here's how you you are not to be passive. It says, For God has given us a spirit of fear, intimidity, but of power, love, and self discipline. So the three keys to overcoming passivity is power, love, and a discipline or sound mind. Yeah. Those are how we do is to overcome the passivity in our life. Yeah. And everything. So And it's little steps. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit every day. You're not gonna wake up in the morning and blah, just have it all of a sudden. Or most people are not gonna. You know, it's little just make little steps every day. So it could be for the guys that are are watching and struggling that um, maybe your first step is is just to sit down and read the Bible. I, I love what Pastor James has, has told us. It's just always has stuck with me over the years. It's just read two chapters a day. Yeah, it, it's just read, so quick. Read two chapters a day, and then the next day you read two chapters, and you just keep going on and on, and you may not even understand in the moment of what you're comprehending, but that's okay. Yeah, It's the heart behind of putting God first, and just being with him and reading and everything. And so I think we all can make that commitment. We yeah. always read two chapters a day. So maybe that's the first thing of not being passive is maybe tomorrow let's just start reading the word. Let's let God just kind of penetrate us and speak yeah. to us through that. And like you said, even if you don't understand it, yep. I said I think I'm still close enough to being new to starting to read the Bible. I remember I started reading I was like, I, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Don't understand really what I'm reading. Right. Um but I just, just keep doing it, you know, and, and not that I'm some expert now, but like when I'm reading it, it's just easier. It's, it starts to get easier to kind of yeah take things out of it and understand it a little bit more. So if you feel like you're failing or you feel discouraged or rejected in a process, uh, that that's okay. Right. Uh, just keep going. Right. Yeah. Just keep doing it. Yep. Yeah. I, and I think another thing would be, especially to the married men is just, Maybe sit down with your spouse and say, is there areas that I'm very passive in? Oh, yeah. Oof. I know that's, that can be a hard conversation, but I've just always, I want to be the best I can be in all areas. And I'm going to lay my pride down. And, and I've, I've, I've talked to my wife about this. Is, is there areas that you see that I'm passive in? And not to start conflict with her. It's more of, I trust your judgment. I trust what you're seeing, and so maybe I can't see that I'm very passive in areas because it's just my flesh, and I'm just working, and I don't understand it. But an outside perspective is going to see if you're very yeah. passive in areas, and so you know maybe that's another step for men to be able to take. Yeah, and it's a great conversation to have because I'm sure that there's something that your wife is passive in. Oh yeah, like it's just natural for you to have an element in your life. Yep. Like we all do. Like if I sat here long enough, I could probably list several things. Mm -hmm. That I, and 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 I might not even be meaning to do it, right? Um, but it might be a great conversation to just say, "I'd like to talk about this." Right. You find out what she thinks, and then it's an, an opportunity for you to talk to her about what you think. Yep. Uh, and then what a great way for both people to become better individually and then better together, like as a couple. That's a that's such a great great point right there. Well, let's wrap this up. So as we kind of get ready to pray for the guys and the, and the ladies watching, uh, what's the, the final thing um, to you can speak to um, to people watching that are passivity is starting to take control of their life? What is that one thing that you can tell them today? Just don't let life don't let life pass you by. Right. If you if something happens in your life, have a don't let things happen and not have some way to react to it. And I don't mean react in a bad way. Yep. Like if something happens, you got to, you got to have some sort of reaction to it. You got to come up with a game plan. You got to, you got to react to that moment. Again, not bad. You just have to have a reaction to the action because mm -hmm. if actions keep happening to you and you don't react in some way, you are letting that element of your life just go by. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's a good word. I'm um, excited. Thank you for being on, on the podcast Always. today. It's good to have you in front of this side and the other side of the screen. Yeah, and hopefully everything it's still videos. recording over but there. If not, then we'll be <laughs> shooting this again. But no, uh, you, you mind praying for, for everyone watching? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Father God, thank you so much for this time. 
uh, here with Pastor John, such a great, great guy to have in my life. Uh, and we just want to pray for everyone listening, men and women, um, that they just can take control of any sort of fear uh, due to passivity, um, and that we just pray action into their life, pray decision-making, um, and just pray that they turn to you uh, when they're scared or they don't know what sort of action to take, that they lean into you and, and can listen and use your word to encourage them to take a step and, and get into the game. And, and we just pray that uh, people have success with these decisions, and uh, we just pray that they have encouragement uh, when they feel like they're failing or they've made the wrong decision uh, for you to encourage them to know that they're in the game uh, and they're going to learn from those those actions and it's just going to strengthen their character and we just pray that it helps strengthen marriages and, and relationships with kids and, and work relationships and we just thank you for uh, all the things that you that you do for us and we're thankful for this platform to help people. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Man, thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate you. Um, you know, if if you're listening to this or wherever you're watching, if you could hit subscribe, if you could leave us a, a, a rating, that's really going to help us get this word out. Yeah, we just want to share with more people. We want to share it with more people. But, you know, to to the men that are watching, if if you're not aware, we have a Women of Victory podcast that we just launched. Yeah. Um, a few months ago yeah. and that's blowing up and it's going it's really good. And so, uh, what I love about that is I get so many ladies watch the men and the men watch the ladies and it's just good back and forth. Yeah. And so, so if you, if you say we want more men of victory, well, you know what, next week there'll be a women of victory podcast out there for you to listen to. Yeah. And so it's just a good back and forth. And, um, I just love what they're doing over there yeah, and what great, you're doing with it. So great insight into the things you're, you're, wife or significant other might be dealing with for yep. sure. It's yep. great. Absolutely. So thanks guys for joining us and to the ladies and uh, catch us next time because we're going to have a powerful, powerful word for you. And uh, man, get in the word and stop being passive.